Well, just like that, September baseball is here, and now is the perfect time to discuss what I think will end up being the playoff bracket. I'll break down every single division race and both wild card races, tell you who I'm favoring and stuff like that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on that bell so you don't miss another upload. It's a great time of year in baseball these next two months. Wow. Uh, let's get started right away, man. American League East race. The Tampa Bay Rays are 7.5 ahead of the Yankees right now. The Rays are 86 and 50. Them, the Dodgers, and the Giants are all within a game of the best record in baseball. Uh, so the Rays are all the way up there. They just won't settle down or anything like that. And at this point, I don't expect them to. A team that's basically tied for the best record in baseball is not going to blow um, a 7.5 division lead. They're just not. Um, I hate to say it. But the Tampa Bay Rays are 2021 American League East champions. I know I hate overreacting. Like, I'm trying to stop uh, ending races too early rather than what they actually are. Because I was really, really close to saying the Braves are definite NL East champions. But the Phillies and Mets are suddenly in the race again. But um, Tampa Bay, they're, I, they're not the type of team that's going to choke such a lead. And the Yankees and the Red Sox both are good teams but have their flaws. Under a month, 7.5 game lead on the Yankees, 8 on the Red Sox. The Rays are not going to blow it. Tampa is 6 ahead of Houston for the best record in the American League. How about that? For that number 1 seed in the league. And that looks very likely. A game 1, seed 1 at the Trop on October, what is it this year? October uh, 7th for ALDS game one on that Thursday. So you'll have a game at the Trop on that Thursday probably, and then you'll probably have that White Sox Astros series. You know what else is going to be weird? The Rays are probably going to get prime time, which is very, very... They got it last year. They played the Yankees in the division series last year and actually got night games throughout the ALDS. It's weird seeing the Rays in prime time, especially because they have that dome, that terrible dome that... You really like to put in afternoon games just because MLB uh, rightfully so likes to avoid putting a lot of sun in the daytime during the playoffs. So they like to get the do domes in the daytime if they can. And the Rays and their small marketness is perfect for that. But not when you're going to play the Red Sox or the Yankees in the division series. AL Central, the Chicago White Sox have not been that lethal. Even though their roster, like, I still look at the White Sox as being really good contenders just because tremendous lineup, tremendous rotation, tremendous back in the bullpen. It's just kind of weird to see them not being great. Uh, then again, at the beginning of the season, I was so down on the White Sox. I ranked them number 11 in baseball when a lot of people had them right around the 5-6 area. Some people had them more like 8, um, but most people had them around 5 or 6. Uh, I got bashed for it. it was aging pretty badly and it still isn't a great take but even with Lynn and especially Rodon because we didn't think he was good at all uh, going into the season but especially with them performing this good the White Sox still only being 21 above 500 uh, it's not a horrendous take I guess they're gonna land around the seventh eighth best record but the division's over the Indians are in second place last month of Cleveland Indian baseball by the way how about that? That's sad. They're 10 back at 1 above 500. So the AL West, is there a race there? The answer is almost definitely not because the Astros are 6 ahead of the Athletics, 6 and a half ahead of the Mariners. Um, here's the deal. like The Astros were hanging to a point where we didn't really look at it as a race that much, at least not me. But the A's, I knew that there was a chance they could make noise. The A's have always had the harder remaining schedule. So to see the Astros pulling a bit away, even though the Astros, they were like 20 above 500 in, I forget if it was June or if it was like early July, but they're only 24 above 500 now. So it's been a bit stagnant for the Astros, but not a collapse or anything like that. Um, the Athletics are six back, so it has extended. And the Mariners have been really, really weird. They'll have these small good streaks, these small bad streaks. It's all led to being what? Uh, the Mariners are 73 and 62. So they're still very much um, not in a worse position than they were, to be honest. Actually, they were one game back at one point somehow, right around the trade deadline. Um, yeah, that was right when I made the Kendall Graveman video. All right, so do I mention that that video, that I talked about how 
bad the Astros and Mariners trade was for the Mariners when the Mariners traded away Kendall Graveman for Abraham Torre. I, I learned that it's Kendall, not Kendall. I was saying Kendall Graveman. Um, but yeah, uh, Torre hit the Grand Slam off Graveman to break a 0-0 tie and win the Mariners a game. Uh, so strictly because of that, the Mariners are fortunate that the trade is going to, if it, that's 1.0 games right there, basically. Well, I would say 0 0.5, actually, because it was 0 0 games, so they could have still won. won. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mariners, uh, it's not going to be a horrendous trade, at least. At the time, it was very puzzling, but it's very, very um, good for the Mariners that they're actually getting something out of Toro, because that was very far from a guarantee. And how about the A's? They're 74 and 62. They were 17 above. It was, yeah, 44 and 27 in, like, mid-June. And they have been really uh, five below 500 since then. They're just not that good. They'll have these little runs where they stay alive. They're without, obviously, uh, Loriano for the rest of the year. That hurt back when that happened, but they did get Marte, of course. Um, it's just really weird. The A's are kind of falling out of it. They're going to need a lot of good stuff to happen fast. So with that being said, let's shift the focus straight to the American League wildcard race where the Yankees have the top wildcard spot by half a game. The Red Sox are suddenly right with the Yankees again. The Red Sox are just half a game behind the Yankees. The Red Sox hold the second spot. And suddenly, the Boston Red Sox look like definitely a playoff team. Four ahead of the Oakland A's somehow now. The Red Sox are 20 above 500. They're 79 and 59. That's four ahead of the Athletics. That's four and a half above the Mariners. That's five above the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays uh, have been overall a real like August letdown, but they have had a slightly nice stretch here to get to 10 above 500. They're 72 and 62. So the Yankees and the Red Sox, they have a playoff spot safely by four games, which looks really good for September, and neither of them have a hard schedule remaining, but there is three teams all within five, so... It's definitely not a guarantee. It's not a safe spot just yet, just because of the number of teams that are within that five-game range make it likelier that one of them will uh, catch up or at least make it really close. But Red Sox-Yankees wild card game looks, looks more likely than not, especially because neither of them are going to uh, move up to win the division. So I guess that's the focus. Like I guess I haven't paying close enough attention to the standings like I'll... I'll consistently peek at them, but I don't really evaluate them uh, on any daily basis. Um, but I'm going to start doing that now as the Yankees and the Red Sox are uh, within a game of each other, half a game lead for the Yankees, which, man, as a Yankee fan, that's all I guess I'm looking at now, the race for home field with the Red Sox and, of course, making sure you don't get passed by any of those like not-so-amazing Teams like the Mariners and A's. The Blue Jays are the best of those three teams, for sure. The Blue Jays are better than the Mariners and the A's. But home field versus the Red Sox. Yankees, Red Sox, wild card. Like, I just, I, I could just picture, like, home field matters to an unbelievable extent for the rivalry in a wild card game. I was at a rivalry game last month, but it's not really because of that or anything that I'm saying that. The Yankees did win at home that game. It's just because, oh my god, like, the records, I don't have them right here, but they would definitely back it up over the past few years. I know the Yankees lost two home games in the 2018 Division Series versus the Red Sox, but in 2021, the Yankees have been much better at home than than on the road when it comes to playing the Red Sox. Um, and you just get that much better vibe at Yankee Stadium than at Fenway for the Yankees, that matchup. All right, NL. NL East, the Braves have a two-and-a-half game lead over the Phillies, the Mets four games back. These are not dynamite teams by any stretch of the imagination. They're all, uh, well, the Mets are 500. The Braves are eight games above 500. The Phillies are somewhere in the middle of that. They're three games above 500. The Phillies still have a really easy remaining schedule, although they're really, ooh, the Phillies had that nice run to suddenly get back to being like five above 500, but then they've lost the first two games of this series to the Miami Marlins, which, man, oh, man, that is not good because the Marlins... I know they're a bit better than their record would suggest. The Marlins are like more like 24 games under. They're not that bad, but that's still that's still part of that really easy schedule the Phillies have to lose two straight to the Marlins very very bad. 
but the Phillies are still in the mix nonetheless. The Braves, I think we're finally realizing they're just not a dynamite team without Ronald Acuna. The NL Central is definitely over. Remember like a few weeks ago when Reds Brewers felt like a really exciting weekend series that was starting up? Brewers was able to take command of the Reds. They played them a lot. Um, they played them like two weekends in a row. Uh, I think that might have been the All-Star break where the Brewers played the Reds the weekend before and the weekend after the break. If I'm not mistaken, the Brewers were able to handle the Reds, and now the Reds are 10 games back. The Reds were really having nice baseball, but they have definitely scuffled lately. They're only 8 games above 500 now, which is the thing. The Reds hold a playoff spot despite being 72-64, and 64, whereas the Red Sox have the last playoff spot in the American League, but they're 20 games above 500. So the NL East winner and the NL second wild card have very poor poor records both less than 10 above 500 as of now so you expect both of those spots to finish with under 90 wins uh um but the other three nl playoff spots the nl west winner the brew crew along with the top nl wild card all have really dominant records and then the nl west the dodgers and the giants i don't know what to say like the dodgers are definitely the favorites the giants are one ahead as of right now this is before their Saturday game has ended. So I'm rooting with insane passion for the Giants to hang on to that division lead. I definitely don't think it's going to happen if I were to predict, though. So then the NL wild card, the Dodgers and the Giants, the loser of that division, has a firm, firm grist, 13 and a half game lead for the top wild card. Then currently it's the Reds that has the second wild card, but let's look at the race. The Padres just half a game back. The Cardinals one and a half games back. The Phillies 2.5 and, and the Mets 4 all in the race. Reds have the much easier schedule than the San Diego Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals. Low-key wouldn't mind seeing the Cardinals in the playoffs. Wouldn't mind seeing the Reds in the playoffs because that's different. And the Padres, of course, I would want Fernando in the playoffs. And the Phillies, of course, I would want them in the playoffs. And the Mets I really like at times as well. Sometimes I get really into the Mets. So I, I like all those teams that are options for the second wild card. 